Okay, so again, this is called eight brocades of silk, and um, almost ex basically what we did seated, but you'll, you'll see the difference, especially for the legs and uh, doing the full body. And again, if you go to YouTube, you'll see similar, the beginning, the first few movements will look a little bit different, but then in the end, they all kind of start looking the same. Okay? But there, there are other um, exercises that look just totally different, but they might still be called eight brocades or so. So as always, feet, we'll start feet together. Right? And, and again, you, when we feet are together, the inside is touching and the, from there, and that just helps the, the kidney channel to stimulate the kidney channel. Okay? So drop down and come up. Okay. And yeah, just come and join us as everybody gets back in. Breathing in. And I like to stretch up a little bit more and then sink. Same thing, coordinate that movement, relax all the joints while you're doing this. Top of the head is suspended. All the joints are loose and open. Okay. And as you complete it, just gently pick up one leg and open and step. Okay. So about width of underarm, not too wide. So the first movement, so I'll relax. You can sink a little, just to overemphasize. You come up to the mouth and turn down and press. I'm having a little bit up and down movement with my legs. And then draw and press. My heels can come up a little bit and down. And let your hands rest. Okay, so it breathes in and out and in and out. One more time, in and out and in. Feel the shoulder blades. Okay, be careful, don't need to look all the way up, just 45 degrees is enough. And again, in and out, and in. And if you feel the waist wanting to turn and rotate, just go ahead and let it turn and rotate. And last time. And in and out. So although we talk about three repetitions both sides or six all together, always what what's comfortable for you. Yeah, you never have to you never have to do them in order. Okay, number two, you're gonna lift and fold your left hand on top. So I'm gonna mirror you. So your left hand, solar plex. The right hand is about belly button height. And with your shoulder blades separate, looking up. Again, not more than 45. Both hands stretch away from each other. And you lift and expand the body. And then the upper hand starts to come to the side and the head rolls with it. So warming up the neck at the same time, as you come to the bottom, both palms start falling and then lift together, breathing in, then fold your right hand on top. Again, I'm mirroring you and then expand, opening the spine. Again, don't look up all the way, just 45 and then turn and let your head turn and rotate all the way down and release both palms. And then begin again, breathing in and out, your left hand on top, and press, breathe in and out, releasing the both wrists and palms, breathe in and fold your right hand, inhale and exhale. Roll the head, and one more round. Inhale, your left hand on top. 
breathing in and out. And last time right. Your right hand on top. Expand. And look to the front. Okay. Number three, both palms up. This time just turn both palms down, drop your shoulders. And as you come down, exhale and turn to the left. And then turn back to the front. Okay. And breathe in. Turn to your right as you exhale all the way. And then back to the front to finish. When we learned this from our Taiwan teacher, he actually did this move fairly fast, but I like to do it a little slower. In and out and back to the front and in and out. And last time in and out. Okay. And then, um, Number four, I'm probably doing a little different order. So this is the one we're going to hyperextend in. So, so watch first because I don't want anybody falling down. I have heard of people falling. So the feet are a little wider. They can face out. The knees have to bend. Everything has to bend. And as you come out, notice my elbows are down and not lifting, right? So it just comes out and it falls. I'm going to tilt my body. Okay, but as I tilt my body, my head stays in position. In other words, I don't look up. Okay? So I just want to look straight ahead, squeeze the shoulder blades together, then the hands come straight up and forward. And that will throw the body back forward, palm over palm, gently touching the body, and then gently falling, and then again. So it has that nice circular motion, right? So it's like opening, Looking straight ahead, coming up, right? So when this hand comes up, it's going to throw that, your body forward again. Okay? If you're worried about falling, you don't have that confidence yet, right? I can go up against my sofa, my chair or something, just in case I, f I fall, I lose my balance, I can just plop right down. You lose your balance, don't fight. You lose your balance, right? So if I come out and, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to just stretch, 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 right? I'm going to go for it. And then I go, whoa, right? Just throw your hands forward and relax. Just sit. That's, that's what the chair and cushion is for. If you're confident and you know, you're okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. So ready? So bend the knees, right? Everything is bent. And again, do not bend the head up. Just look forward. Okay, so breathing in. Squeeze the shoulder blades and lift the hands up and forward. Palm over palm, right up to the tantin. And let go. And again, breathe in. And out. Yeah, be careful you're not be careful, you're just looking straight ahead. Don't, don't tilt your head back. Yeah, look forward. Make sure you're looking forward. You tilt your head back, you're gonna, the, the head is really heavy. And let the knees shoot forward. If you're standing, right, just bend. You wanna just open the chest, the rib cage. And honestly, when I first learned it, I was probably looking back, right? I was probably younger, a little bit more flexible and... But that's not necessary in the, in the movement. I just do one more. And relax. Okay. So, I have the corner, right? I have the corner where the ceiling and the wall meet. When I come back, I shouldn't be looking any more than, than the corner where the ceiling and the wall meet. If I'm look, if I can see straight above me, that means I'm tilting my head back. Okay, we don't want to do that. Yeah, you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. I just want to be looking 45 degrees 
forward. <laughs> and I know some of you are really flexible, you know your body, but keep it safe, right? Don't, yeah. Um, if you want to stretch a little bit more, do it slowly so you know what's comfortable. Okay? The next one is the bow and arrow. So that one you want to bring your feet back a little bit more and you want to squat. Again, only squat what's comfortable. You want to push a little bit, but it's a warm up. It's a strength building at the same time. So as I come down, my hands are going to fold, right? I have that coordination. You um, want to start with your left hand inside. And the left hand is going to grab, like grabbing the string. You turn towards your right and you pull the bow and arrow. You try and keep your hip tucked in, your tailbone tucked in. And you want to look right through the L. Imagine you're staring at the mountain. Keep the shoulders down. Right? It's very low, it's very short. You notice my, my fist doesn't go, um, it just goes past my sternum. It's right in the center over here. Yeah. And then I breathe in, and then I rise. As I rise, I release my palms. Okay, let everything go. Then my right hand is gonna come inside as I drop. The right hand grabs and I turn to my left while exhaling. And relax, drop the shoulder. Yeah, there. And just stretch this up here and drop the shoulder and the elbow pulls out. See, right there, that's all you can go. And then come back to center and rise and release. And then left hand, breathe in and exhale. Breathe in and exhale, release. Then right hand inside, in and out. And in and out. We'll do one more time, left hand. Breathing in and out. And last time, right hand inside. Pull the bow, expand. And come back. And rise. Okay. And then before we do the waist, we're going to do the punch. So the feet a little closer again. As I, as I squat down a little bit, whatever's comfortable, I let the hands slide. So from the back, as I'm dropping, the hands come. They're going to rest here. They're going to hold a loose fist. Okay? Be careful the knees aren't pushing forward. I'm going to fold the waist. I would rather you, the upper body, lean forward a little bit for now to keep the pressure off the knees. As you get comfortable, the upper body can straighten, okay? and the whole body can rock to move rather than letting the knees come forward. Want to try and keep the knees not past the large toe. Okay? And we're gonna punch with your left hand first and use the ha sound. Open the throat, let, let the, feel the belly, ha! Huh, feel, feel the abdominal muscles move. Right? The body can turn a little bit, but it really doesn't have to turn much. Okay? Keep the shoulder down. Don't let it hyperextend out from here. Okay? So I'm going to breathe in. And with the left hand, ha! Huh, it's going to drop across. Just drop it down and then swing it up and out. And then in. And then cross while you rise. And then to the side. In the right fist, breathe in. Cross, breathing in and out and down. And left hand, huh, your left hand, cross and rise. Right hand, huh. how far you go down, it is your comfort level. One more time. Left. And last time, right. Cross and rise and relax. 
Okay, so as we work to our hip and waist, it's going to be wider, hands rest here. And just breathe naturally. I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift to um, these tend to start on the left side, but again, don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to shift. I don't want my knee to go outside. So I keep it in line. Just go down and letting both knees shift. I'm going to shift to my right. Look behind my shoulder in the sitting form. I'm imagining I can see behind my back. I look at my opposite heel. My weight is shifting. Look at my toe and come back to center. Right? And then I go the other side. I'm sorry, I go the other side. Look at toe to toe to heel behind to the other heel and center and then shift. So keep the hands on the knees. Don't let them go off the knees. We're keeping them on the knees. That will help limit your range of motion so you don't overextend. Just take your time. Yeah. So you can feel that that um, movement can be a strength building for the legs, right? And it can really loosen everything up. So hips, and then as we get to our knees, so we start with the hands on the hips, uh, I'm sorry, on the kidneys. And this is the one, if you stand, kids, if you can squat all the way down, you can squat, but try to let the fingertips trace and they'll come inside and out. If you cannot squat all the way down, still imagine that the palms are tracing completely all the way down. If I can only go here, I'm still imagining my fingertips are touching and I'm tracing them on the inside and coming up. So I have days where my knees, my knees are stiff. Maybe I can only go down to here. I'm still projecting that they're coming around and inside. And I have days maybe I can squat down, but I don't want to. Right? <laughs> I don't want to push it. But if you can, they can go all the way down. Gently follow with your mind or lead with your mind. So the palms are tracing all the meridians of your body. And get the chi to flow through every meridian of your body, all the organs. You can try to do at least six, but you can always do more. You can always do less. I'm gonna do one more. And when I finish, I'm going to finish where my palms are resting on my kidneys and just take my time, just let it rest there and breathe. Relax the kidneys and then let it come down and do need two more movements. So this is the one I'm going to go up. There's a little bit of tension, but I'm pressing, I'm stretching. I want to feel all of these muscles stretching down while I'm breathing in. So I'm going to breathe in and exhale. <laughs> so when I exhale, it's like pulling the pin out of the joint, right? Everything drops. I can kind of throw myself down, let the whole body vibrate. I want everything to vibrate. And so I'll turn side first, I'm breathing in and out. <laughs> in, out. <laughs> and the ha sound, right? Let the air come out, open the throat. And again, breathe in. <sighs> In, in, all the joints should be loose, everything should be vibrating. Yeah. And then the last is bend just like that rocking chair and just rocking back and forth. And you see how my head 
stake pretty much stays in the same place so everything is swiveling from there the bottom of my feet from my heel to the toe gently pressing on the earth massaging on the earth all the joints are loose just rocking back and forth it's that rocking chair kind of motion yeah relax relax there you go open your eyes <laughs> are open. I'm Chinese. What can I say? There's nothing about being Chinese. You're staring at the ground, that's why. Okay? And loosen up. Okay. Alright, good. So that's eight brocades of silk. Um, my recording? Oh, I keep forgetting to check my phone, but it should be recorded. I'll try to get this posted. And. Yeah, some, somewhere on another YouTube session, I might have one where I just run through the whole thing without the stopping and explanation. And the nice thing about the recording on YouTube, you can slow it down, you can pause it. Um, you can probably download it, but if you download it, please don't share it. <laughs> That's for you. Or just, just run it up there. So eight brocades of silk. So again, really quickly, um, Number one movement is coming up and down and you can pump the legs and, and draw, press. Yeah, don't look, no need to look all the way up and down. Uh, no need to tilt the head like that. I'm sorry. Number two, your left hand. Okay, I'm doing my left hand. Expands. Roll the head and do two sides. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling all the way down. Number three, looking left as you exhale, then back to center, breathing in and out, then back to center. Number four, again, same thing, don't pull your head back. Throw the hands up and center. Number five, Coming down, left, ha. And center and rise, and then the right hand, breathing in and out. Number six, embrace your hands, rotate and loosen up the hips, looking from toe to toe, to the back and the heel, center and shifting to the other side. Keeping the hands on the knees the entire time. Okay. And then number seven, that whole meridian tracing. Coming up the center, kidney, liver, under the, the collarbone. Okay. And then number eight, pressing and coming up, breathing in and letting go. And the closing, right, just rocking back and forth. Turn to the side, right? Rocking back and forth. Yeah. Just like that rocking chair, let's just let it swing and feel the bottom of the feet massaging. Okay. So eight brocades of silk. Um, I can't think what the Chinese name was called. Eight brocades of silk. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's see, we have about 25 minutes left. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, we have about five minutes left. <laughs> it's 11.25. <laughs> Dyslexia. <laughs> um, so, let, since I showed you these weights, if, if you have a weight or, you, you, don't, you can do it with or without, but, um, Let's do the teacups. So, yeah, hold the weights. <laughs> They're not that heavy, right? With or without weights, right? So, teacups. So, again, these are really nice because I can actually leave the hands open. Right? I might have to do a little bit of twirling, but... So, when I do standing, it's the same thing like that rocking chair. I can feel the body going back and forth like this, right? 
Okay, if you watch my knees, there's a little bit of movement in my legs. All the joints are open. Yeah. So in the teacups, you can see how if you wanted to add that, that fist, yeah, that grabbing and opening and that twirling, what we did earlier, you can. Right? Yeah. And with weights like this, you could squeeze them and let go. So you could use those stress balls, right? Or you could squeeze them and let go. The whole time, right? relax the shoulders. Let the joints move. And when I say let the joints move, um, yeah, not wildly and try not to go over. But if they do, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. And if you, can, if you can turn your waist too, and what happens is one hand starts leading the other hand. It, it doesn't become exactly symmetrical. It is and it isn't. But the weights can turn while you're doing it. So just relax. Okay? So go back and you come forward. And when you use weights, you really have to pay attention to the leverage. Right? If you go too far out and you don't drop your shoulder and elbow, you're going to create too much strain on your shoulders. So just relax all your joints, let everything fall into place. So what I find is doing the teacups with some kind of resistance can really help to build up the shoulders. But again, you can do it with weights, without weights, just the hands. If you do it with the hands, you can add the fist grab with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I haven't done this in a while. I can. I can really feel it working the shoulders. Uh, it gets tired. Just put it down. Okay. And then do one side. You do one side. Turn the body. Turn. Turn. You tuck the elbow and shoulder in. Turn and turn. Let it fall. So right over here. Let it fall. And as you turn, just rotate. And that'll keep the stress off the shoulders. If, if you try and pick up the hands, if you try and come down and work too hard and picking up the hand, that's where we can injure the shoulder, too much strain. So just let it fall and then use your body to, to rotate. Yeah, we haven't done teacups in a long time. Teacups are really good. The more you do teacups, the more you realize what a natural motion it is. And then do the other side. Okay, so nothing special to my progression. I do two sides, I do one at a time, I alternate. Do one direction, then do the other direction. So when I come here, I can go open, then I can squeeze, and then open. I'm trying to turn my body right around my spine. So when you come here, this point right here, drop your elbow. Drop your arm and elbow. There, and then the hand will turn. Then you won't strain the shoulder, right? As I'm coming up right here, tuck the elbow in. There, that's better. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yes, that looks so much better. And you can feel how if you tuck this elbow in right here, right, you take the strain off your shoulder joint. We don't want to strain the shoulder joint. It's still going to get that nice exercise. Okay, then we want to reverse, so coming up and then turn the waist. And same thing, when you come here, you should keep the elbow down. If you lift like this, you're going to put too much strain on the shoulder joint. So you come here and you turn, let the hand fall. Yeah, and then turn, and it rises, turn, let the hand fall. There, come through the waist, yeah. So be very conscious of keeping the elbow and the shoulder down. Do one side, and then do the other side. Same thing, right about here, turn, and let the hand fall. So if you turn the waist, you turn the body, turn the waist, that will bring the hand to the back of you. Not pulling the hand to the back, but turning the body. You can alternate left and right. Yeah, I think 
think we need to use it. I've had this weight sitting here for I don't know how many weeks. <laughs> And then just start alternating back and forward. Yeah. You come right here. Feel how the feel how the body swings the arms for you, and just rotate. It comes out, swings. Drop the shoulder and elbow. When you drop the shoulder and elbow, the hand comes up naturally. Yeah. Drop the shoulder and elbow. Drop the shoulder and elbow. And let the body turn. So it's a turn, 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 turn. Yeah. Turn, 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 turn. Yeah. Okay. And just rotate back and forth. So practice going back and then practice coming forward. And if you get that rotation from one to the other, you get comfortable. Remember, it only goes back and then only comes forward. <laughs> okay, so let's close up. Oh, that was nice. Oh, that felt good. That's yours. Keep that on yours. So sitting or standing, come back, come back, come back. We're going to close class. Come up. Yeah. Do three times, sitting or standing. And we'll close class with the bell meditation. Oh, that was good. Yeah, the teacup movements are such good movements. <laughs> we were talking, we figured we've been together 29 years. <laughs> does, does that qualify for an honorary um, marriage certificate or <laughs> what? 29 years. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any specific date. It's, it's just, I always have to go, um, let's see, I joined the DU in 89, fall of 89. Uh, I moved. I moved to where she was working in this year and then we just, yeah. Somewhere along the line, we became a couple. Yeah. All right. So calm everything down. Again, hands on the lap up or down. Down a little bit more relaxed. Up, you can just feel the whole body connected. Still relax. Yeah. Or you can have in front of the heart, yeah, wherever you, wherever you want, wherever you want, whatever is comfortable for you. Just gently close the eyes, relax the lower abdominals, relax the lower belly, so the air just flows down to your tantin. Sun in your chest, warm and cool, connected to the sun in the sky. Relax all the facial muscles. Smile to yourself while relaxing the cheek, letting all the tension go. Relax the hip, the lumbar. Smiling to yourself. Relax your hip, the legs, the knees, the ankles, the feet, so they're falling into the earth. Top of the head is slightly suspended from above. Tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth.
slowly open your eyes, rub your hands together. Yeah, relax. Ah. So Chinese New Year is uh, Tuesday, February 1st this year. Yeah. <laughs> so everything's, everything's starting. I'm, I belong to this Facebook um, Cantonese, uh, Cantonese recipe group. Everybody's making gao, everybody's doing all their Chinese year, New Year meals. Just amazing things. Um, people make amazing pastries. Oh, there's, there's just amazing bakers out there. Um, I just shared one. Somebody made, they, they made um, bao, but it looks just like a real apple. Kind of like a Fuji or a, a, some other apples I was showing her. And she, she must paint them. She must hand brush them or something. They look like real apples. Right? Just amazing. And she breaks them open and it's bao. And, oh, and there's these... Um, no, she, it's, it's bao. Yeah? So some yeah. are just bread, some are filling. But they look like real apples. She even puts a stem on them. Um, some other people put... Uh, they're making decorations. So they make the bao. Same thing, they start with the bao, but they make the tiger, they make whatever animals, just incredible, but they're all bred, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, just, just amazing. Just amazing talents out there. There's, there's one that I want to make, it's, uh, it sounds so easy, they call them dragon cookies, and it's just, um, I think it's just baking soda, a little flour or something, kind of a white thing, and they push it through. Um, one of those baking nozzles, right? Kind of the star patterns and they just kind of curve it like dragons and they put two red dots for eyes and they might decorate it a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, so um, go enjoy your Chinese New Year. You know, Chinese New Year lasts at least a month, right? <laughs> and that, uh, that link, if you look at the chat, and I'll, I'll send it to Susie, but if you look at the chat, I put a link to that woman's memories of um, when she was young, what it was like to grow up in China and what the Chinese Lunar New Year was like. And she talks about some of the traditions and, and such that she went through with her mother-in-law. Uh, not mother-in-law, I'm sorry, with, with her step, stepmother. With her stepmother. Yeah, there. Okay, so your right hand, left hand. Okay, so thank you. I'll, I'll turn mine off. You can turn on your, turn on your microphones for...